Hey guys. It's the start of a new year. A lot of people are looking back at 2019 and trying to make this next year even better than the past year was. Which is great. It's, it's awesome. I hope everybody's got really good goals set up for the year. Um, I just thought today that we would do something a little different. We would have sort of a, a sit down, Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon style chat with you. About something that we've been realizing over 2019. Something that's slowly been building over time and we're just now becoming conscious of it. And that is that what we're doing is very different from what most of the people around us are trying to do. Um, we do a lot of unconventional things as business owners rather than purchasing items and and collecting stuff we are building the stuff we're building and selling and providing items that other people consume there, there's plenty of business owners but they're disproportionate to the number of just straight consumers um, and our culture does a lot to help that out our school system trains us to be consumerism employees instead of producers um, again it's not better or worse it's just what we what we've chosen to do by running a business it's it's different. Maybe not everybody understands what you do or why you're doing it. Maybe not your friends, maybe not even your family. Your friends may not really know why you don't want to go on the boat that weekend because you've got orders stacked up. Our priorities, like our priorities, um, are a little different. We want to build a business. We want to create a product that brings families together. We want to build a business that provides jobs that eventually bring families together and, and long term, you know, help other people by creating our business. It's very hard to build relationships and close friendships with people who are going different directions. If you're going different directions, how can you walk together through life? As you may know, or maybe you've experienced or haven't experienced yet, it, it can feel kind of lonely. What we're doing is just so radically different from what most people are trying to do that it, it starts to become a little lonely. But thanks to you guys, like thanks to the internet, we as business owners don't have to feel lonely. We are able to connect in a way that has never been at the fingertips of humanity before. The internet is a place that provides connections between people who otherwise never would have met. Um, gone are the days of going to a party with 40 people there and having to talk to a whole room before you found two people that have the same priorities as you. And we can find other business owners, other people that are doing the exact same thing that we are. And that's so, so encouraging. You can make friendships so much faster because you have the same goals and priorities as the people around you. So Davis and I actually had the privilege and an awesome opportunity to visit one of those people, one of those people we met over the internet, who is that person with the same priorities uh, to us. And that's Bruce Allrich, I'm wearing his shirt right now. But we met him at WorkbenchCon last year, and over the course of the year, being on his podcast a couple of times, we got the opportunity to, to meet the rest of his family. And that was something really special. It was to be around another person who had the similar goals and, and aspirations that we do. So our goal in 2020 is to make you feel less lonely as a business owner and include you in, in some of these relationships. And just to show you that there are people out there like you that, that want to push you along, support you, and watch you win. And one of the best ways that we can do that is to show you our interactions with our friends and the people that we have found comfort in, in learning to, to know and just making friends with. So you're about to watch the rest of the video, which is our trip to Bruce's. You can really get a sense for what his what his business is like, what his workflow is like with his staple product of, of cutting boards and wanting to use that to leverage into bigger builds in the future. We wanted to have this whole conversation with you to let you know that you don't have to feel lonely because you're a business owner. Just because you're doing something that's so different from what 95% of the other people in your life are doing, doesn't mean you're crazy. It just means you got different priorities. You're, you're striving for a different goal. And that's not better or worse. It's just different. And I know that you can sort of feel left out sometimes because you're doing something different. Just know that there's tons of people out there just like you that want to encourage you and want to see you succeed as well. You just got to find them.
introduce himself and tell you all about what he does and who he is. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's been good having y'all here. I'm Bruce Ulrich. Uh, my channel is Bruce A. Ulrich. So I do a lot of DIY stuff, mostly woodworking. I'm probably going to start experimenting with some other mediums here and there, but um, I've done a little bit of leather. But yeah, I just, I've been liking that for a while. I've been putting up videos for a couple years and um, you guys were on your way through and thought it'd be fun to hang out and do, do a couple projects. Yeah, so like he said, he does a wide variety of stuff. Uh, we were looking at his Glowforge. We've been looking at all the projects he's made, tables, bowls, you name it. But one of the things we were looking at is your cutting boards. So you do a ton of cutting boards. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I got into, I did a lot of photography, portrait photography, uh, kind of got out of that as the kids came along and we're getting older. I got into real estate photography of doing listings because houses don't blink and it's easier. <laughs> So I started establishing this client base of realtors mm -hmm. that I was shooting for. And um, it kind of uh, two or three years ago turned into me making things for them to give to their clients at closing. And I have just kind of iterated on that and honed that process of what they will tolerate as far as a dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And also what seems, what product seems to appeal to them. Right. And I, that's how I've kind of landed on the current iteration that you've seen of those kind of stacked cutting boards that I make. Mm -hmm. So I sell a lot of those to realtors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make them all here and laser engrave them in my shop and then um, then they're ready to go. You're dealing with a lot of glue when you're making all those little strips and then you're making multiple cutting boards at once. Mm -hmm. So we saw you had an interesting trick for dealing with glue squeeze out. What is that if you could describe it to us? Yeah, I kind of just happened upon it. Uh, years ago, I worked at a bank and they always have banners from events that they sponsor mm -hmm. or whatever. And once that event's done, they're done with that banner. Well, these banners are usually some type of vinyl sign. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just grabbed one one day and rolled that thing out over my workbench that I didn't want to get glue all over, okay. set the clamps up and glued it. And then you just roll the thing up once it dries and put it away. And yeah. Um, it's been really easy. I've actually recommended that people, they can find them on that type of thing or like, you know, youth baseball on the corner that you see those signs when they're done with those things, contact that group or whatever and just see if you can have it because they're just going to throw the yeah. sign away if it's particular to that event. One other thing I found is using a scraper after they're dry and out of the clamps seemed to be a waste of time for me. I would always have to sharpen the little scraper a lot and it makes a big mess because it flings that stuff all over right. the floor. Then you have to vacuum it up yeah. or sweep it up. I just found that to clean it up at the planer, with a planer you want a flat surface to start with. Mm -hmm. So the way I ensure that it's as flat as possible is on the top side after I've glued everything together in the clamps. I just take a paper towel and I smear the glue to where it doesn't have big beads where it's come out. Yeah. So it's all pretty much one level or level enough. Gotcha. And that way when it dries and it doesn't have a bunch of runs and ridges on it, when you take that out and run it through the planer, you can flip that, use that as your reference side yeah. to get the other side and then flip it and clean it up. It's really easy. Yeah, and that's a lot of like that's a lot of physical labor and work yeah. to scrape all that glue off each one. I mean that's takes a while. Tries that workout. So what about the glue going through your machines? Isn't that bad for it? Does that hurt the blade? Maybe. I mean, I take it as part of the process okay. and I've done it a lot at this point and have not seen that it significantly dulls the blades faster You're than not just using wood. Changing them three times faster than no. you used to. Okay. No, I'm not. Nice. So because you're a realtor, we kind of got some inside information. So how would you recommend woodworkers approach realtors if they want to sell them closing gifts or things like that? Okay. Uh, a few things. When I was doing photography, I learned that uh, a lot of these brokerages, they get credit for and need to continually be educating their agents. So okay. they'll have weekly or bi-weekly meetings and they'll bring in speakers that are experts in, you know, their photographers. I would do that. I would go and okay. speak and teach value, you know, give value to their yeah. agents. Um, so I would say that may be a good way. Stop by a real estate office hmm. with some things in hand. So I think okay. if you're a woodworker, it's probably more impressive to have the thing with you, the physical thing, because yeah. it just makes a better impression. They can touch it. They, they can, can touch see it. it, feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, ask, walk in, ask to speak to the broker. Okay. Because um, they're usually the ones, there's usually a couple brokers that control the meetings and just ask them that. Say, look, 
I've got a few things that I make. I'm a local guy. I see your signs everywhere, you know, yeah. whatever you need to talk to them. Um, and just say, I thought it might be a good pairing for me to provide value for your agents to see if these gifts are, of, you know, of value to them to help their clients, you know, mm -hmm. have a, have a, a real memorable leave behind from that transaction. Um, and a lot, a lot of times they'll just give you like 20 minutes to come speak at their, at their meeting. And you may have some things that, you know, cards that you leave behind yeah. or whatever, but you've shown them your bowls or you've shown them your cutting boards mm -hmm. and, um, maybe even leave one behind for a week or two so they can look at it yeah. or oh, raffle awesome. it off. I mean, I don't know, you know, if you, if yeah. you have it, do a little giveaway and just be like, you know, thanks for your time. Someone's going away with this board today and please spread the word. I, you know, I do referrals. Yeah, There's lots of too. stuff. I like that. You know? So we've been saying it a lot, making closing gifts, making closing gifts. What is a closing gift? So a closing gift is, it can be any number of things, but it's something that a realtor will typically give to their client, mm -hmm. either the representing the seller or the buyer. This is in residential real estate mm -hmm. um, at closing. So when they close on the house and they have bought their first house or whatever, sometimes they will give them something that pertains to that sale or that house or you know, some, some of them get really detailed that they know mm -hmm. their clients that well. And so they'll go get them a gift card or they'll go get them whatever. Um, there's different laws and rules in every state as to how much can be um, written off for IRS. There's certain advertising requirements mm -hmm. for it to be up to code uh, compliance. And if you are within that, then that realtor can actually write off the entire expense as a marketing expense. Gotcha. Regardless of what the IRS says you can write off, it, it's just an advertising and marketing expense. So you it's, it's a double benefit they're actually giving their clients something making them smile in addition to them finding a house and all of that so it's right. kind of a double whammy it's a leave behind so every time they see that the thought is they're going to think of you the realtor mm -hmm. and then you actually get to write it off as a marketing advertising expense yes yeah, so if you can swing it to make it seem like you know hey help me help you i'm helping you out here also mm -hmm. i mean that's a bigger sell especially if they can write half of it off all, all of a sudden the, the cost for buying your closing gifts goes down. It does, and along those lines, something that I discovered is years ago, it was very rampant that realtors would would give a gift at maybe a little frame or a cutting board mm -hmm. or a knife or whatever, and it had the realty's name all over it, like all over the front of it. Yeah. And the joke was, my wife would be like, I'm not putting that up in my house, yeah. you know, because yeah, it has fair. their name all over it. So then I really started pushing a couple years ago, like, wait a second, if, if she feels that way, what would we want what would we leave out mm -hmm. well put my name the client on it if so my cutting boards i put the ulrich kitchen yeah you're gonna leave that out on your counter right because it's yeah. mine mm -hmm. and the realtor's information is on the back but i would actually argue that if it's enough of a statement piece you're not necessarily even going to have to have all of your information on the back i mean that helps for that marketing experience mm -hmm. but they're going to remember you if you've got an 18 inch cutting board sitting on the counter that you use daily they're going to remember who right. gave that to them. Every time they pull it out. Yeah. yeah. So could you go over kind of what you charge for these or how much you make being that you batch them out? Yeah. Um, that That's kind of going to depend on your market. Obviously, mm -hmm. the market will only bear will it, what it will bear. And yeah. here I have kind of found that this hundred dollar level is about that high range of okay. what a realtor is willing to spend, gotcha. like they don't think much of it. They'll do that. I've tried bumping it up a couple times and over the years. They just don't go for the it. The orders kind of trickle back yeah. down a little bit. And so I think I'm in that sweet spot. That being said, I think this board is worth more retail. Okay. But my model is kind of a direct to consumer model. So it is higher margin for me and they're getting a better deal, you know, right. cause retail always has that markup in it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm batching these out. My my margin is better than 40%. Yeah, so which is, I'm I mean, fine with that. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And so then all I do is try to be more efficient with batching it out yeah. and, and combining actions as I can, because that only makes that more marginally profitable. Right. All right, so thank you so much to Bruce for showing us around his shop and opening it up and showing us exactly how he makes his cutting boards. It's been awesome to learn from you and see exactly what you do. That's a lot of things that we want to implement 
um, in our own processes once yeah. we go back home. So thank you. It's yeah. been awesome. So Bruce does have a YouTube channel as Bruce A. Ulrich. You can also find him on Instagram, um, Brew Daddy. It's at, at Brew Daddy. Daddy. Yep. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, he's got a lot of great stuff on Instagram. So go check him out. It's kind of fun talking through the, the process. You know, I'm, I'm out there just doing it by myself in my own head. So yeah. to talk it out loud and, and see that there are some things that I'm doing right and it's already given me ideas of some other things I can tweak maybe to be yeah. more efficient. So thanks for, thanks for that. Absolutely. So I know everybody's got a lot of different goals and a lot of things going on for 2020, but we just want to encourage you to find some sort of community of yes. other business owners and just get involved because it's so much easier and better to do this with a friend or with someone else who's encouraging you alongside you. And it doesn't, I mean, necessarily matter what that group is. It's go find something like your local chamber of commerce, a Facebook group, a maker community, something. And if you can't find something like that in your area locally, we have the Stud Stack. It's a private Facebook group. It's $30 a month because we just want to make sure that everybody in the group is financially committed to their business's success. But if you really can't find anywhere else locally, join the Stud Stack. It's exactly what we've been talking about. It's just another community of maker businesses who are sharing their wins, their questions, their concerns. It's mm -hmm. just a great community to come together and not feel so lonely anymore. But this whole video is not just a push for this group, but that is something that we offer if you're looking for that kind of community. We just want people to be involved and to not feel yes. so alone. We're excited for you. Thanks for hanging out with us and making our 2019 so amazing. Like it, it really was all of you guys, so. Thank you, yeah. and we wish you the best. Hit that like button to not feel so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> False promises. I know. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. We'll see, see you on the ya. next one.